As we look at Tintoretto's The, Converse, the Conversion of St. Paul at the National Gallery, the first thing that really strikes you is the sheer size of the painting at five feet high and almost eight feet long. This work really dominates the others around it. It really does. The size of this work is really important as it seems to almost add to the gravity of this moment in this specific scene. I really don't think Tintoretto could have achieved the same essence of this instant if the painting were smaller. Now, as you start to focus on the subject matter of this painting, it's helpful to have at least a basic understanding of how this moment came to be. Paul, who is at this time not only Jewish, but also a prosecutor of Christians, is on his way to arrest Christians in the city of Damascus. It's while he's on this road that he experiences an invasive and overwhelming divine intervention from Christ. And it's during this moment of intervention that we really see the message that Tintoretto is trying to send in this painting. And that is how not only Paul, but everything and every person around him is affected by the divine power and how they almost seem to fear the divine power of Christ. Everyone was affected by the intervention in a similar way. And if we look at the individuals, we can see just how scared everyone seems to be. And Paul and his fellow travelers and the soldiers and even the horses all have a unique facial expression. And they are really trying desperately to get away from the divine lie. Not only are they running away, we can see both men and horses who are just jumping straight into the river to try and escape. One of my favorite details about this painting is if you look in the river, we see people trying to swim away, but there's also these very, very faint faces of these men who seem to almost be underneath the water as if they're drowning. It's very unnerving and kind of creepy. Well, it's really important that we note that um, the fearfulness of the divine is not something we saw much of in previous Renaissance and High Renaissance artists. Um, here, Auntie Toronto, who is painting a few years after the end of the High Renaissance, is just moving away from people, worshipping, and just being with God and His power. That's a really good point. In a lot of the Renaissance paintings we looked at, we see Jesus and God depicted as this loving, nurturing, sometimes even fragile figure. Where here, it's not that Jesus is actively doing something to scare these men, but they're clearly frightened by his sudden presence and terrified even in this chaotic scene. And that's not something that was consistent with a lot of Renaissance paintings. Now, when I first looked at the conversion of St. Paul, one of the first things that popped into my head was how similar it was to Caravaggio's The Calling of St. Matthew. Not in terms of style. Stylistically, they're very different, but the story behind each painting is almost identical. In both, we see Jesus calling to individuals who one day become very important figures in Christianity. But one thing that I really love to look at here is the reaction of each person in the painting to Christ's presence. In the calling of St. Matthew, only a couple people are even acknowledging that Jesus is present, and those that do seem rather indifferent that he's there. The people to Matthew's right don't even acknowledge him at all. They're too busy counting their money. And that's just exactly the opposite from what we see in Tintoretto's The Conversion of St. Paul. Every single thing is being affected by the presence of Christ, and they're not indifferent. They're all terrified.